Yo, what's up? Welcome back to another episode of The Source. Uh, we got that winning night. Remember yesterday I was like, I need a green night. We got it. VIP ticket goes five and one. Uh, that Bucks minus 11 was my only loss. Hey, and the parlay of the day hit. That was plus 771, I believe. So a great NBA night. How about we keep it rolling? Nine games on this NBA Wednesday slate. Let's dive in. Welcome to The Source. Get the Suez. Portland on the road in Memphis here. We got a 7 p.m. tip off. Total opens up at 239. Line is Memphis minus five and a half. And everyone's on Memphis. 82% of the tickets, 81% of the money's on the Grizzlies. Line never moves, which is a little alarming if you plan on betting Memphis. We're still looking at five and a half. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Memphis minus 7.06. So that's about a point and a half lean on the grid. Quick look at this matchup. And for starters, we all know how bad this Memphis Grizzlies team has been against the Western Conference. Just 10, 19, and one against the spread. Only the Houston Rockets have a worse record against the spread than Memphis against their own conference. Good news for the Grizzlies is their struggles against the Western Conference mostly come on the road. As if you follow me on Twitter, I was talking about that trend. Um, at home, they've actually been okay. I think they're like eight and six against the spread at home against the West. And here's the thing. Portland is just ass on the road recently. They started off the season 11 and four against the spread in their first 15 road games, just one and nine against the spread in their last 10 road games. And as I've said in previous videos, the Blazers just cannot stop giving up easy buckets at the rim. Um, there's just no defense being played underneath. Check these wild numbers out. In the past three weeks, Portland is first in the NBA in offensive efficiency. This is the most efficient offense in the league in the last three weeks defensive efficiency over the same span 29th only the spurs have a worse defense than the blazers in the last three weeks now stephen adams is still out for the grizzlies and obviously that's a loss but that means brandon clark's gonna get a lot of burn at the five and that just further exploits the weakness of portland nurkic is just too slow to keep up with these smaller, more athletic fives. Exactly what Brandon Clark is. I'm a little concerned that everyone's betting the Grizzlies and the line hasn't moved. I'd feel a little more comfortable if this bumps up to six in the next hour or two. We'll see, but either way, I'm on the Grizzlies. Give me Memphis minus five and a half. Player prop for this game. Um, as I said, I think Brandon Clark's gonna get up and down the floor a lot faster than Nurkic. Should run circles around Nurkic. Um, so I'm gonna take Brandon Clark over points. It hasn't been posted yet, so I don't know what the line's gonna be, but I like Brandon Clark over points next game. Orlando on the road in Philadelphia, 7 p.m. tip off. Totals at 2.30 and a half. Line opens up Philly minus nine. And we got ourselves a pros versus public look here. Uh, public slightly leaning Philadelphia. Sharp money all over Orlando. 77% of the money on the Magic. Line actually moves up. So we're looking at Philly minus nine and a half as of earlier today. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. According to the model, the line for this game should be Philly minus 6.76. So that's a nice little three-point lean on Orlando. I hate these double headers that the NBA loves to do. Uh, obviously, these two teams just played the other night. Orlando was down big. I think they were down close to 20, came all the way back and beat the Sixers straight up in Philly. I took Orlando plus nine in that one, and I'm going to take the Magic again in this one. I know a lot of people are going to bet the Sixers thinking it's a doubleheader, and they'll split the games, and they probably will split the games. I think Philly probably wins, but I'm not laying damn near 10 points to a Magic team that's 8-2 and two against the spread in their last 10. Orlando's playing good basketball right now, so give me the points. Give me Orlando plus nine and a half next game. Nets are on the road in Boston, 7.30 p.m. Eastern time. Tip off, total opens at 2.24. Line is Boston minus eight and a half. And we got another pros versus public look here. Uh, public slightly leaning Boston, sharp money on the Nets. Line has not moved the muscle. We're still looking at Boston minus eight and a half as of earlier today. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. According to our model, the line for this game should be Boston minus 6.52. So that's a solid little two point lean on Brooklyn. So Brooklyn's found themselves a nice little groove here. If you remember when Durant got hurt, the Nets dropped four straight to some bad losses in there too. They lost four in a row and we were kind of like, oh shit, here we go again. Durant gets hurt and the Nets fall right down in the Easter Conference standings. Same thing that happened last year. But here's the thing, since that four game losing streak, the Nets are actually four and two and three of those four wins have come against playoff teams. Obviously at first glance, I wanted to take Brooklyn, right? You got a Nets team that's red hot shooting the three ball. It's a rivalry game, catch it eight and a half points. The thing is, this Nets team without Durant's very reliant on the three ball, and Boston's starting to turn up their perimeter defense recently. Earlier in the season, that was kind of the Celtics' weakness. They were struggling to stop the three. They were chilling 18th, 19th, 20th 
in the league defending the three ball. In the last three weeks, the Celtics are seventh in defensive efficiency against the three. In that same three week span, the Celtics are also eighth in defending the mid range shot. So really analytically in the last three weeks, the way to beat the Celtics is to attack the bucket. Not exactly what the Nets like to do, especially without Durant. But check this out. Did you know the Celtics are 0-6 against the spread in their last six games? Six straight losses against the spread. And since Marcus Smart got hurt, the Celtics are just one and three straight up. I know it's a rivalry game and Boston should get up for this, but you know what else was a rivalry game? When they played the Knicks uh, a couple games back, Knicks came into Boston and straight up beat the Celtics. The Celtics just really haven't shown me much in the last couple weeks, so I just can't lay the points. Uh, I don't love it because I can 100% see in the Celtics and Tatum going off on the Nets, but... I'm taking the points. Give me Brooklyn plus eight and a half next game. Kings on the road in San Antonio, 8 p.m. tip off. The total's up at 244. Uh, line is Spurs plus seven and a half and everyone's on the Kings. 74% of the tickets, 93% of the money on the Kings. Everyone you know is betting San, uh, Sacramento. Line has a move, still seven and a half. Let's take a quick glance at the spreadsheet. Our model's saying the line for this game should be San Antonio plus 9.52. So that's a two point lean on Sacramento. Yo, remember when the Spurs were on that hot cover streak? The Spurs went 10 and four against the spread in a 14 game span. And no one really noticed it because they were losing a lot of games. They just kept covering the number left and right. Yeah, that's come to an abrupt end because the Spurs are actually 0-5 against the spread in their last five, five losses in a row. Um, so it's really tough to back a Spurs bet here, but I don't like this spot at all for the Kings. Sacramento's coming off that double header against Minnesota, and I watched both those games. Both were tough physical games start to finish. They were battles. Uh, they split one and one. The second one, Sacramento actually pulled off in overtime. I just don't know how fired up this Kings team is going to be to play the Spurs here. They went into San Antonio just a couple weeks ago, um, they won by 13, but they shot 47% from three in that game. That probably won't happen again. And also, Keldon Johnson went 8 of 25 from the floor. That probably won't happen again. I like Keldon Johnson to have a big game on the stat sheet tonight. I think he puts up a big number. Uh, I also like Jeremy Sohan to dominate the glass. When I say dominate, I think he'll have 9 or 10 rebounds. Taking his over, we'll get that in a second. I'm fading the public here. I'm fading everybody. I'm taking the Spurs. Give me San Antonio plus 7.5. Uh, prop bet for this game, I'm taking Jeremy Sohan over 19 and a half points and rebounds next game. Oklahoma City on the road in Houston, another 8 p.m. tip off. This total sitting around 232, I believe. Line opens up Houston plus six, but it drops down to five and a half pretty early. Everyone's on OKC. 82% of the tickets, 90% of the money. Everyone on the Thunder still looking at Houston plus five and a half. So let's take a quick glance at the spreadsheet and our models telling us that the line for this game should be Houston minus 5.63. I'll explain why in just one second. So the Houston Rockets are a model's worst nightmare because they're actually analytically the best rebounding team in the NBA right now. In the last three weeks, they're first in ORB percentage and fifth in defensive ORB percentage. They're not winning basketball games, but goddamn, they can clean the glass and it's throwing everyone's model off. Well, I should speak for myself. It's throwing my model off. Uh, most basic basketball models have EFG percentage counting for 40% of the weight, and then rebounding percentage is second at 25% of the weight. So the Rockets sitting with these awesome rebounding numbers, it's making, it's throwing it all off. One thing I will say is Houston is two and two in their last four games, including a real nice looking win over our red hot Minnesota team. So th this is the worst team in the NBA. The Rockets are the worst team in the NBA, but there are some signs of life. Either way, doesn't matter. I can't back the Rockets here. Oklahoma City is second in the NBA at 16 and nine against the spread coming off a loss. They're coming off a loss tonight. Also, there's a little bit of an added revenge element. Houston handed OKC an ugly loss earlier in the season. Now it was all the way back on Thanksgiving weekend. It was a while ago, but it, Houston beat them up pretty good. And Jalen Green went six of nine from three in that game. I guarantee you OKC didn't forget about that. Jalen Green isn't even playing in this game for Houston. So obviously we're not gonna see that again. I hate betting on a side with this much of the public on it. Everyone's on it, but I can't back Houston. So I'm laying the points. Give me Oklahoma City minus five and a half next game. Golden State on the road in Minnesota. Another 8 p.m. tip. The total for this one's at 238. Line opens up at Minnesota plus three. Public's definitely on Golden State, but the money's actually closer to even, which means there are some sharps out there that like the T-Wolves. Let's take a quick look at our spreadsheet. The model saying the line for this game should be Minnesota plus 1.68. So a nice little two-point lean on the Timberwolves. This one kind of sucks because obviously the sharp play here is to take Minnesota in the points, right? But if Golden State's about to go on a run where it looks like they might be about to, they're about to go on a run towards the top of the Western Conference standings. 
I don't want to be the guy, I don't want to be the asshole sitting there betting against them taking L. I faded Golden State in the last game. I took Oklahoma City plus five. I took the L there. It used to be so simple. Bet Golden State at home, fade them on the road. <laughs> you, for two months, you could just do that blindly. But things have changed. Check this out. So at the end of December, Golden State was 13-4-1 against the spread at home. Since January 1st, they're just 1-5 against the spread at home. Now let's look at the road games. At the end of December, Golden State was just 4-15 against the spread on the road. Since January 1st, 4-1 against the spread on the road. So the Warriors trends have done a complete 180. Now they're covering the spread on the road and not covering at home. Here's the thing though, Minnesota has been a red hot ticket lately. They're 11 and four against the spread in their last 15. They're nine and four against the spread on the season as home underdogs. I mean, this is a perfect spot. This is the spot you bet Minnesota. Obviously it's Golden State. You know the arena is gonna be packed. There's gonna be a lot of energy. You know they're gonna come out looking to pull the upset off. Another angle I like for the T-Wolves in the past 10 games, the most frequently used lineup for Golden State by far has been Steph, Poole, Clay, Wiggins, Draymond. Draymond Green getting a lot of burn at the five. Rudy Gobert's got like five full inches on Draymond Green. I might be a fool for this one, fading the Warriors when it looks like they're about to get hot, but I'm doing it. I'm taking the T-Wolves, giving Minnesota plus three and a half next game. Toronto on the road in Utah. We got a 9 p.m. tip here. The total is 230 and a half. Line is Utah minus three. And we got another pros versus public look here. Public slightly leaning Utah and the sharp money is all over the wraps. I mean, we're talking over 90% of the money on Toronto. Um, the line never moves though. We're still looking at Utah minus three as of earlier today. Let's take a quick look at the spreadsheet. The model saying the line for this game should be Utah minus 6.84. So that's almost a full four point lean on the Jazz. So Toronto continues their West Coast road trip. This will be their fifth game of this road trip all out West. They're two and two in the first four. You gotta give some credit to Toronto. Have they completely turned their season around? No, not really, but they're definitely playing at a higher level right now than they were a couple weeks ago. OG Ananobi still being out for the Raptors sucks. He's so good. I wanted him on the Knicks so bad. Um, but one team that can replace a player like that is Toronto. They have so many forwards that have length that can play defense. Both these teams very good on the glass. In fact, both the Jazz and the Raptors are in the top seven in both ORB percentage and defensive ORB percentage. So it's pretty safe to say whoever wins the rebounding here will probably win this game. For me, the deciding factor here is just the fact that Utah's at home. Both these teams are better at home. If this game's in Toronto, I'd probably be betting Toronto. Uh, the Jazz are 17 and nine at home in Utah this year, including four and one against the spread in their last five home games. Toronto, on the other hand, just eight and 17 on the road. I, they really haven't been that great on the road. I know on this particular road trip, they're two and two, showing a little bit of signs of life, but overall, I still have to go with the Jazz. I know it's a square pick, but I went square in a couple of picks last night that cashed, so I'm sticking with it. Give me Utah minus three next game. Atlanta on the road in Phoenix. This is a 10 p.m. tip, last game of the night. Totals 231 and a half. The line is Phoenix minus one and a half. And we have another pros versus public look. That's four in one slate, kind of crazy. <laughs> public is slightly leaning Phoenix Suns, sharp money all over the Hawks. Line never moves. We're still looking at Suns minus one and a half. Why don't we take a quick glance at the spreadsheet. According to our model, the line for this game should be Phoenix minus 5.02. That's a nice three and a half point lean on the Suns. Well, I was saying it last week a little bit. The Suns are kind of back a little bit. I mean, at least betting wise, they're seven and three against the spread in their last 10, four and one against the spread in their last five at home. They're by no means healthy. I mean, they're healthier. Uh, they're still missing Shamet, Devin Booker, obviously, and campaign. So they're still missing some key pieces, especially on the offensive end, but the defense is there. The main factor in this is which Hawks team is gonna show up because there are two versions of this Hawks team. If you remember, this was just like two weeks ago, the Hawks won five straight and it was like, oh shit, DeJounte Murray's back from injury. Here we go. The Hawks are gonna start looking like the Hawks we thought they were. Since that five game winning streak though, one in four in their last five. To be honest, I don't see a ton of betting value on this game. This might not even make my final ticket. Um, I'm gonna take Phoenix because they're at home and they're playing much better than the Hawks. But like I said, don't see a ton of, it should be a fun game to watch, but give me for the video sake, give me Phoenix minus one and a half. Let's go Suns. My top three bet and parlay of the day. Parlay of the day cash yesterday for plus 771. So let's go for two in a row. Um, that stuff will be posted on kylecrims.com and the Sauce Network app around 4, 4.30 p.m. Also, if anything changes with the picks I just made in this video, I will let you know on Twitter. Um, NBA is crazy with injury reports. It's impossible to predict. So if you're interested, uh, I post that stuff on Twitter. Give me a follow there. NBA Wednesday night. We had a terrible Sunday and Monday, but then a badass Tuesday night. Let's follow it up with a badass Wednesday. Remember to bet responsibly, and I'll talk to you on Twitter.